Memory mapped I.O. is one approach that we use to transferring data between one system and another system. With memory mapped I.O., essentially what we do is we take the registers that we use to control a peripheral and we map them into our memory space, treating them just as if we were reading or writing to another type of physical memory. This allows us to get great performance improvements and to develop and build some rather interesting things. Here we can see a very basic piece of code that will actually implement a file copy operation. So it starts in this area here by essentially checking the usage, making sure that we have the right number of arguments being passed in, that kind of straightforward stuff. And then what we do, I'll put a return in here, is we go down into the actual copy method where the copying occurs. So inside the copy method, what we do is we start by opening the source and destination for reading and writing. If for some reason both files are null, we're going to return negative one because we've got an error. If we have something being, one of the pointers being null, we're gonna close the other file and return a negative number indicating an error on that. That's all error handling. Then when we get into the copy part, basically we've got the same routine that you would expect. We get a character from the source. If it's not EOF or the end of file, we write it out, increment the count by one, continuously do this loop until we get, in this case here, to the end of file. Once we're at the end of file, then we return the count and essentially we close the two files up. So, very basic, as I said, example of copy. Let's take a look at what happens when we run it. So, what I've got here are two files, a small file and a big file small file we're going to copy it and what I'm going to do is I am going to time this as I run this so we can see what the execution time is so small file dot text to small file copy dot text like so so we're copying 25 or 2500 bytes roughly 2600 bytes it is virtually zero time for this copy. Now if I go to the large file, I can do the same thing. This is the big file. This file here is essentially 26 megs, so it's a big file. It will copy. And this took 1.6 seconds to copy essentially. So it was a little bit slower, but it's a much bigger file. We've got copies now of both of these files, and you can see they have the same size. They're the same size here, which is good. We want them to be the same size, showing that copy has worked. This is using basic, basic, basic copy functionality. Memory map file I.O. allows I.O. to be treated as a routine memory access by essentially mapping a disk block back to a page in memory. So what we'll have is essentially RAM and essentially a page from our disk is essentially just mapped into memory, just as if it was memory access. So a file using memory map files essentially is read, read using demand paging. So we read in a page size portion, whatever that may be, and into a physical page. So a page size portion, maybe this section here, will transfer into it. Subsequent reads and writes then are treated as ordinary memory accesses, essentially swapping and loading as is necessary. What this does is it really simplifies our file I.O. Because what we do is we're doing our I.O. in memory rather than calling discrete read and write system calls. Each one of these reads and writes requires a trap down into the OS to the kernel level to actually perform the operation. We also can have several processes mapped to the same file allowing pages to be shared. So if I have a process A here that needs this file here, it can map to it. Process B can map to it. And they're mapping to the same space in memory. What this also allows us to do is to improve our write performance. Because we're essentially going to wait to write until we have close or periodically 
will write to things. But these operations, because we're just talking about memory, can go on in the background while other work is going on and while we are manipulating the file through a regular swapping. So this allows, in terms of functionality, whenever our pager, that's part of our virtual memory system, scans for dirty pages, we essentially write this material out. Meaning we do not immediately write things out when they change. The MMAP system call creates a new region in the task virtual memory map, associating that region with a file. So essentially what happens is we have somewhere over here in our memory, we're going to have essentially file contents. This actually returns a pointer to the blocks of the file as they reside in RAM so that we can access them. Thus, we can access the file just as if it was an array in user space. So we can talk about accessing any given byte just by reading, for example, array bracket 10, which would give us something, say, around here, the tenth byte of it. Thus, we do not have to read and write, and we also do not have to access memory in a sequential fashion. So we can access anything at any given point in time that we would like to access. Now what we would like to do is take a look at the same basic copy function implemented using the mem or using the mapped memory mechanism to copy. So we have a different file here, mm for memory mapped copy. And what we're going to show with this is that there is a difference in implementation. And this is a much more complicated copy program that we've got here. You'll notice right here, there are a lot more includes necessary in order to use this memory manager for copying purposes. The argument checking is the same. Now what we do is we start by opening the source in read only. If there's a failure, we close it and exit out. We create a mapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to read from the file using the fstat method. We're going to figure out how big the file is, how many bytes are actually in the file by reading that. And we're going to put that into this data structure here called SB, where SB essentially is some information about the file. If we have a special case where we've got a file of size 0, which means a file that's empty, we're going to exit just with an exit success, nothing that we need to do. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to create a shared location in memory that is our source. So we're using this mmap, memmap file to create a segment of memory of the size of the file we want to that is protected for read only, it's private, and it's based off of the contents FD source, which is the file that we opened right here. Now that we have done that, we're going to ideally have a pointer come back, which is source, to this file that is going to be read from. Then we're going to create a similar thing for the destination. This is read write, and we're going to create it, and we're going to truncate it, some other options here. And we're going to create or open this file here as being our destination file. So we open this. We're going to make sure there's no errors in it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, again, map the destination file to be something that points to a buffer in memory. So we've got our size, protected read, protected write, map shared. So now what we have in memory is essentially what we're showing here on the screen. We have our two buffers and they're pointing at each other. Then what we do is a simple mem copy of the size. So we're going to copy from one buffer into the other buffer as the program executes. We're going to sync the buffers, which basically means we're going to take the destination and write it out to a file, and we close to. Notice there is no reading of each individual byte, none of that. We just simply open the files and perform a simple copy right on this line right here. So that being said, let's take a look now at our files again and see what that makes difference performance wise. So I'm going to compile the code that we've got here, like so. 
it compiles away and I want to do the same thing on this small file that we've got here so we're going to take small file small file.txt make a copy of it into small file.txt that copy 0 0.004 and if we go back to what we had with traditional copy this was 0 0.07 so this is taking basically half the time that it took to do the copy here and that time is essentially what it takes to open and close the files now let's try this with the big file so here we go we're going to copy big file dot text into big file dot text dot copy you notice virtually unchanged five units versus 1.6 seconds so in this case five milliseconds versus 1.6 seconds a big difference and we've got an exact copy of the file big files match small files match in terms of size. Now the reason this is much faster is the copy is done essentially in memory not on a byte by byte basis. We are reading the file in using the block mechanisms that the operating system provides. We make the copy and we write it back out all at once. Not one byte or two bytes or a small number of bytes at a time that we do in the other example. So this is an example of using memory mapping and how it can be advantageous to us in programming.